Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. For this vlog, I went through my Goodreads and counted up just how many series I'm currently in the middle of and the total came to 22 series. Of those 22, I definitely don't want to complete or continue on with all of them, but I would say there are a good many that I would like to finish out and there are a good many on my TBR still that I have yet to start and want to. So I feel like I need to get through some of the series that I'm already in the middle of before diving into anything new. And I felt like this video trend that's been going around on booktube was a great way to kind of motivate myself to get through these series and kind of document my progress as I do so. So for today's vlog, I picked out three books from three different series that I'm planning to continue on with. The first book I'll be reading is The Goal by L. Kennedy. This is book four in the Off Campus series. I have not read from this series since all the way back in May. I feel like I've kind of been putting off reading book four just because I know the trope in this book is not one that that I'm usually a fan of and I feel like this book tends to be people's least favorite of the series but I do just really want to finish out this series so that I can read the spin-off series to off campus which is Briar U and I feel like now is a great time to do it while it's still hockey season it's still winter this series gives me all those vibes also it was recently added to Kindle Unlimited so I'm going to be reading it on my Kindle I feel like I don't have an excuse to avoid it anymore not that I'm not excited about it I feel like I'm just hesitant to pick it up then I'm planning to read Legendary by Stephanie Garber. This is the second book in the Caraval trilogy. I loved Caraval so much, but the ending kind of disappointed me. I feel like it left me with so many unanswered questions. So I'm hoping that this book is going to kind of resolve the issues that I had with book one and answer all those questions that I had. I'm also really excited to complete this trilogy so that I can get to its spinoff trilogy, which is the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. And I know that Jax, one of the main characters in that trilogy, is introduced in this book so I'm really excited to get his backstory and finally I'm planning to continue on with the Magnolia Parks universe and read book three which is The Long Way Home. I feel like I have so much FOMO because book five in this series just came out and everyone is reading it and I just really want to catch up and get through the series because I loved book two. I read it in January and it's been my first and only five star of the year so far. I just really fell in love with those characters so much. This book follows a different set of characters which I'm not as crazy about but I have a feeling that the more I read into this series the more invested I'm gonna get so I'm just really excited to read about the couple that this book follows Magnolia and BJ I really want to know how their story is gonna play out and I'm just so excited to continue on with how much I loved book two so those are the three books from the three series I will be reading for this vlog I'm definitely planning to make this video a little series on my channel so if you like this one I'll plan to do a part two part three part four however many I feel like doing until I get through all of the series that I'm in the middle of. So let's just jump right in. I've started the goal and like I mentioned it has been so long since I have read from the off-campus series and I feel like I've been kind of putting this book off just because I feel like all the other characters aside from Tucker I kind of knew what to expect from them. They're very much in your face and Tucker's character has always kind of been in the background. He's more on the quiet side so I just didn't know what to expect from him one way or the other and I didn't know what to expect out of his book other than what the trope in this book is. Everyone talks about the trope in here which is a trope I'm normally not a fan of. Sometimes it can be done well but I've heard people say that they didn't love how it was done in here so I feel like for those reasons I have just been pushing this one off and not super anxious to pick it up but I did really want to finish out this series and jump back into this world and right off the bat Tucker's character is not your stereotypical hockey player. He is from Texas. He's a little little bit country. He has red hair and for some reason I cannot picture what he looks like at all. I feel like the image I have in my mind is so different to what is on the cartoon cover and then that is so different to what I see in like fan castings I've been looking up and different TikToks and stuff to try and get a better image in my head because I feel like I can't picture him at all and what I'm imagining is not a hockey player. So I feel like for that reason it's kind of holding me back from fully connecting to his character. I don't know if that seems kind of shallow but I just like need an image in my head and I can't picture what he looks like at all but his character is very sweet he's very much a southern gentleman he and Sabrina their dynamic is not what I expected right off the bat they kind of had this like insta lovey insta lusty hookup which I did not know was gonna happen the trope that I am anticipating I feel like I'm just on edge waiting for it to happen what's also interesting about this book is it takes place at the same timeline of events as book three and I don't know why it was done this way but 
some pretty big things go down in book three and so i'm just waiting for those things to happen in this book i feel like it kind of spoils what's gonna happen maybe it's gonna go down in a completely different way in here maybe these characters point of view are gonna be totally different but i'm kind of confused on why it was done that way other than that i am flying through it i'm reading it really quickly it's very easy to read and digest and it's enjoyable i feel like all these hockey romances are just so easy and they're fun to read so i feel like i'm gonna fly through this one i will let you guys know when i have a few more thoughts I read so much in the goal last night. I'm now 75% of the way through. The way it's written, it is just so easy to read and it's very bingeable. And I feel like the more I've read, the more I am enjoying the characters and warming up to them. They definitely have grown on me. I also was reading in anticipation of seeing how this trope that I knew was in the book was gonna come about and just like waiting for it to happen. It kicked in way later than I thought it would. It started at like the 50% mark. And to me, anything that happens 50% of the way to the end maybe even a bit sooner than that i would say is a spoiler so i was like wait i'm not telling you guys what the trope is just because i kind of wish i had not known going into it but it is in the synopsis i went and double checked on goodreads and it's there i personally think it would have hit more if i had not known this trope going in but now that the trope has kicked in it really is changing the direction of the novel and the focus and i don't know if i'm loving it as much i was really starting to enjoy the first half of the book and the way it was going and the couple's dynamic but i don't know i'm not loving it as much anymore because the focus like i said has just completely changed but i'm still flying through it reading it really fast i feel like the next Next time I talk to you guys will be with my final thoughts because I'm probably gonna just binge it until the end. goal and I think I decided I'm going to give this book 3.75 stars. The second half of this book just was not as fun and enjoyable of a read for me as the first half was and it was solely because of this trope and the way it was executed. This trope is already one that's like not my favorite but I have read books where I feel like it's done really well so I can look past it and enjoy the book but the way the trope was done in here it was done in a way where it felt really realistic and like it could happen in real life but what it focused on just kind of like took away from what i was loving about the book so it just wasn't as fun of a time to read about but i did grow to love these characters they definitely took some time for me to warm up to because they weren't my favorites right off the bat but by the end i did really enjoy and appreciate them and liked them as a couple so this book is definitely not my favorite of the series but not my least favorite i know i have one more book in the off-campus series the legacy which is kind of like a wrap-up book where you get to see all the couples and get glimpses of what their lives are like in the future and where they are now i'm not in a rush to pick that one up i want to read it at some point because i want to finish the off-campus series and then jump into the spin-off series briar U. but i've heard some bad reviews of the legacy so it kind of scares me people say that it kind of changes their whole opinion of certain couples because they're written in an unlikable way so that's kind of made me hesitate and not want to jump into it right away, but we'll see. I'll definitely read it at some point, but those are my thoughts on the goal. I also picked up and started Legendary last night. As soon as I started it, I was like, wait, I need a refresher on the ending of Caraval because I just couldn't remember certain details and I needed to know them based on how this book was starting out. So I was trying to look up synopsises online and none of them were just very detailed. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna reread the last like five chapters or so. So I ended up just like skimming the last 50 pages of Caraval and I'm so glad I did that because it reminded me of so many details that I had forgotten. And with Caraval, I loved it the whole way through, but the ending was what kind of made me not love it anymore. I was gonna give that book five stars until the ending just really disappointed me and kind of negated how I was feeling the whole way through. So I was left with so many unanswered questions and some disappointments and things that I felt needed to be resolved. But immediately in Legendary, I felt like all my questions were answered. Everything that I was disappointed about kind of was explained in a way in here where I was just satisfied already and I'm only on like chapter four or five and already I'm like 
okay i feel way better about this trilogy now i feel like now i can just enjoy all the things that i was loving about it and so now it's jumping right into this fun whimsical adventure and i'm just loving it i don't want to give anything away because i don't want to spoil caraval but this is tella's story who is scarlet's sister and we're going back to caraval for round two tella made a bargain with someone and she's trying to keep her end of the bargain more secrets more adventure more trying to see how certain relationships and things are going to play out so i am very excited i'm just like already so pleasantly surprised that all the issues i had at the end of caraval were kind of resolved right away in this i was not expecting that and now i feel like i can just sit back and enjoy reading this story i'm planning to read a lot more tonight so i will keep you guys posted on how i'm liking it We finally met Jax and his character is not at all how I thought it would be. So I think it's going to be so interesting to see his character development. Also, Tella's character, she 100% gives off youngest sister energy and she is so fun to read about. Whereas Scarlet's book, she definitely gave off older sister energy. As the oldest sister, I feel like I really related to her and her book, but I'm having such a fun time following Tella. I am just loving this. I love the magic system. I love Stephanie Garber's writing. It is so beautiful and it just feels very very like magical, poetic, whimsical, so, so fun. I'm loving this and having the best time. I finished Legendary yesterday and I loved it. I don't think I loved it as much as Caraval. I'd probably give this book 4.25 stars. I just feel like I connected to Scarlet's character a little more. I just related to her more, but I loved the storyline so much in this book. I feel like maybe with book one, since the world was so fresh and new, I got really swept up and immersed in the story. Whereas with this one, I kind of found myself like counting pages to see how much was left in a chapter. And then in Caraval, I like didn't even feel like I was reading a book so i didn't like it as much as caraval but still really loved it i loved the introduction to Jax's character and i still have no idea where his character development is going to go so i can't wait to read finale at some point finish out this trilogy and then jump into the once upon a broken heart trilogy after finishing legendary i started the emotional roller coaster that is magnolia parks the long way home i read to page 97 i think on the 30 page mark i already was feeling like this is going to be a five star read which i wasn't sure how i was going to feel about this book and about specifically magnolia's character because after reading daisy hates book and seeing magnolia from christian and daisy's point of view it made me dislike her a lot more than i did before she's definitely a frustrating character anyway but i just felt a lot of negative feelings toward magnolia but now reading from her point of view i really empathize with her more she definitely is frustrating and there's things she does that i cannot stand but that's just kind of how these characters are and it's what makes them feel so realistic and make me so invested in them and their lives. We got a really big bombshell dumped on us very early on which surprised me because I kind of feel like the whole book could have led up to this bombshell and we could have found out at the end because it really brought a lot of closure to me as the reader and I felt like it was kind of brushed over quickly but then like 20 pages later another bombshell was dumped on us and I feel like that's just going to be the structure of this book. We're going to get bombshell after bombshell it's going to be an emotional roller coaster. I've already cried like 10 times reading this book. The writing is so beautiful. I'm already obsessed and I just don't know what's to come in here. I'm anxious to see how things are going to play out between Magnolia and BJ and what's going to happen. I'll definitely keep you guys posted along this emotional roller coaster of a journey. I think it's been about 48 hours since I last talked to y'all. And in that time frame, this book has become my whole entire personality. I am obsessed. BJ and Magnolia are very, very frustrating characters. Just when you think things are going well and it's smooth sailing, something happens that sets them back. And it's like they can just never get on the same page at the same time. It is so infuriating. At the same time, something about it is just 
all consuming and pulls you in and I'm so invested. I can't stop looking up TikToks of BJ and Magnolia, fan castings. I even made a playlist for BJ and Magnolia. I am just so obsessed. And some of the scenes that have gone down in here make me so curious to see what it's gonna be like through Daisy, Christian, and Julian's perspectives in book four. Julian's character has a pretty big role in this book, which I wasn't really expecting. And I know he tends to be like a fan favorite character. I'm wondering when that happens. I said it when I was reading book two. I wasn't the biggest fan of Julian in that book, but I was like, okay, we haven't gotten a lot of him. In this book, I would say I don't really care for him at all. So I don't know if book four is going to turn things around. It's going to be interesting to see where his character development goes, but either way, I am obsessed with this book. I'm so invested in this series. I feel like as soon as I finish this, I'm going to want to jump into book four immediately because I just need to know how everything is going to play out. Right now, I'm on page 374, so I feel like the next time I talk to you guys is going to be with my final thoughts when I finish it. I am kind of scared to see how it's going to go down, but I love this book so much. Last night I finished The Long Way Home and unfortunately earlier this week I was just scrolling on TikTok and this certain comment spoiled what happens at the end of this book for me. But the way it happened, I still have so many questions and I feel like there's so many other things in this book that I need to see the full picture and Daisy, Christian, and Julian's perspectives I feel are going to give me that. So it still made me so excited and so anxious to jump into book four, but it just made the ending of this book a little bit anti climactic but that was kind of my own fault i shouldn't have been scrolling on tiktok looking up tons of stuff about magnolia and bj because i ended up getting spoiled so i'm gonna avoid tiktok until i can finish out this series but all that to say i'm still giving this book five stars. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was incredible. I think I still do prefer Daisy's character and her storyline to Magnolia and BJ's characters and their storyline, but something about their relationship is just so intoxicating. I feel so invested in them as characters, and I have not felt this way about a book since reading Normal People, which is one of my favorite books of all time. This book is just consuming so much of my energy, so much of my brain space. I am obsessed with it. I feel like if you've ever been in a relationship where you care so deeply for the other person that everything is more intense, even your fights and just everything they do is a part of you, you will see yourself in these characters and in the relationship, even though it's a toxic relationship. I feel like I can just understand their emotions so deeply and it just hits for me. I love Magnolia and BJ as flawed as they are. I'm obsessed. This was an emotional roller coaster, but so, so good. And with that, I'm going to close out this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it and you want me to continue on reading more series, I'm in the middle love be sure to give me a thumbs up let me know in the comments below if there are any series specifically that you know i'm in the middle of that you want to see a vlog for and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos and i will see you guys so soon in the next one bye guys